St. John Baptiste de La Salle is. St. John Baptiste de La Salle is. St. John Baptiste de La Salle is the person who La Salle education is based on. He's the patron saint of education. He's a good model for all of our professors and for our students to know what type of mission is La Salle He was born in 1651 in Rheims, France, to a very wealthy family. He felt called to a religious life early on, when he was a boy really, and began preparing for that and studying for that. He has to drop out of college because over the course of 18 months while he's at studies, his mother dies and then his father dies. And he's the oldest child. And he's called home to be the guardian of his younger brothers and sisters. At a very early age, at the age of 16, he became canon of the Cathedral of Rheims, which is a really prestigious position. He was ordained a priest at the age of 27. In 1678, he's asked by the heroic young priest, Nicholas Roland, and on his deathbed, he asked De La Salle to become involved with a group of religious women. De La Salle became intrigued and wanted to be uh, supportive of that. He ended up being a spiritual guide and a mentor, assisting the sisters of the infant child Jesus as they helped young girls who were orphans because of the, the famine in France at the time. In 1679, barely a year later, it's at the door of that convent when he meets Adrian Niel, who comes to the city of Reims specifically looking for assistance in setting up schools for poor boys. Well, certainly through his position, but some would say through divine providence, he assisted a small group of really unskilled school teachers who were really struggling to provide free elementary education in REM for the children of the poor who otherwise had no access to education. Now, what happens is within three or four years, there are families in the cities that could pay for their children to go to another school. But they make the choice that their children will sit on the benches with the poor students. LaSalle's education was about inclusive community, bringing into the educational arena people who would not normally get access to education. He was courageous, um, and as he would say, zealous um, for the work and he wasn't afraid to change uh, what it was that he was doing in order to respond to the real need in front of him. De La Salle is really remembered for creating innovative education, for creating really practical methods for education, but really for educating and concentrating on education for the poor. I think an aspect of De La Salle's life and story that is something else really is um, the fact that he he just eventually gave it all over but one of the ways he gave away his fortune was during the various famines that France experienced in his lifetime he was a wealthy man renounced his position as the canon he divested himself of all of his personal wealth he was gathering these men who were not wealthy didn't make a lot of money doing this work but you know had a good life and had an education then by virtue of working with him. And he would say to them they needed to rely on the providence of God, that they should have faith that God was going to take care of them. He just kept helping people. And eventually, he gave it all away. And he truly did have to rely on the providence of God. And then he really devoted himself totally to establishing a community of consecrated lay teachers who were devoted to, really, the teaching vocation. John Baptist de La Salle knew that for this venture of providing an education for young people, that he knew it could only be done if the brothers, this new growing community of men working and living together, if they truly were a community. They needed that support. They needed to share in the triumphs and struggles and best teaching techniques and discussion about their students, caring about their students. 
St. John Baptiste de La Salle is um, the founder of La Salle in Education, and he's a huge reason why I chose to come here. I like to think in multiple ways I carry on his principles. In one way is promoting inclusivity and human dignity for all in everything I do, especially in my various leadership roles on campus. I chose a picture of having the honor and privilege of presenting an honorary degree at commencement to Brother Robert Sheeler, uh, the Superior General. I chose it because of this notion of community and association. Even though I'm the first non-brother to lead this institution, I have never felt for a second that I wasn't a full participant uh, in, in the work. They treat me and they treat all the non-brothers uh, who are at work uh, in the college and in you know, Italian education throughout the world as being full, full partners, brothers and sisters. His writings are very clear evidence that he knew what teaching was all about. He really understood young people. He understood the importance of education, that the student is so central. The relationship between the teacher and the student is so precious. And the reason is because that student is made in the image and likeness of God. His passion for God and his passion for learning coalesced into this life, which I think is why in 1950, Pope Pius XII declares him the patron of all teachers. De La Salle dies in 1719. His heritage and his charism, his spirit, was kept alive by a few hundred brothers at the time. And then it kept on multiplying and became more, more brothers, more brothers. And then from that it's become brothers and sisters, men and women of all faith traditions around the world. So today at Manhattan College, the LaSallian legacy is lived out in men and women of all faith traditions, our faculty, our staff, our administrators. They embrace and embody what it means to be a LaSallian. I do a lot of community service events, such as SAC events, so I've gone to the Tower of Tunnels Run, and I've done Riverdale cleanups where I clean up garbage, and I think that's a good representation of trying to help the community. Friends of Carrot is an organization that helped my family when my sister was sick. A lot of people were able to come together, and they were able to cheer for my team, and they were to raise money, and it brought Manhattan College together to realize what other children are going through. It gives you that compassion for all those kids that are going through something, and it makes you realize that your issues aren't as big as someone else's that is going through this life-threatening illness. De La Salle was about uh, looking at society and seeing places where there's injustice, where there's poverty, where there's lack of opportunity, and yet there's places of hope. Yeah, there are difficulties in the world, but there are also men and women gathering together in classrooms and laboratories to commit themselves to making this a better society, to making it a better place. I always like to tell our students that we're all Lasallians and oftentimes the students don't really know what that means. And so I always like to, to tell them and to show them that they're part of this really long legacy that really began in 17th century France and that that thread is sewn through history but that it reaches them and that they're part of something much bigger and, and very important and unique. His spirit, his charism, the spark that caught him on fire is what motivates us here at Manhattan College. And we have LaSallian educators in 80 countries of the world, 65 colleges and universities, a million students, 100,000 educators, 3,600 brothers. All today, 300 and some years later, are continuing his legacy and developing it for our contemporary world. I think my Lasallian education changed my entire mindset about what's important to me in the world and how I plan on using that in the future, including social justice and activism and everything I do. I like to think he would be proud. What it means to, for me to go to a Lasallian university is to take people of all colors, ages, races, countries, and statuses like into consideration. And Manhattan College has definitely taught me about that. The LaSallian principles are about respecting human life, the dignity of, of people, being committed to social justice, ethical conduct, quality education. Quality education is the heart of what we're about. 
We try to de design educational curricula and we try to inspire students to be problem solvers, uh, to go out and, uh, and fix stuff. I mean, if it's broken, fix it. Don't complain about it, fix it. These are tough problems. Climate change, you know, racism, um, sexism, inequality. These are tough problems that we, we want our students to, uh, uh, to tackle. And we teach them uh, that they, uh, they need to do it in the spirit of faith. Uh, they need to do it with that zeal for innovation. Uh, and they can't do it alone. In our founder's life, he talks about one step leading to another, where God doesn't force inclinations, but relationships happen, uh, invitations are given, experiences unfold into a whole path of life. Becoming is, is a lifelong journey, uh, but I think that's what the purpose of education is. It's to help us recognize our own gifts and talents, and realize that we have a responsibility to put those things in service of the world, of other people, of the needs of the world. That, that gifts are not given to be kept. Gifts are given to be in turn be given away. John Baptist de La Salle lived in 17th century France. And here we are in 21st century Bronx, New York. And we can't expect a Frenchman in the 17th century to be exactly like someone in the U.S. in the 21st century. But I think there's tremendous importance and resonance to what he did uh, in his time and what influenced the birth of Manhattan College over 150 years ago, and which is why at Manhattan College, 300 years later, we continue to be proud that this is a LaSallean institution.